Hare Krishna. 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 Om Magyana Timarandasya Kyananjana Shalakaya Chaksur Militangena Tesmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakaupata Rupyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare oh, We're reading the Krishna book and we're on chapter number 87 Prayers by the Personified Vedas um, 今天一继续阅读 Krishna 课程的成员，我们读到第八十七章，伟达经诸位化身祷告主。嗯， mm. so we heard about how Maharaj Parikshit wanted to understand how the holy name, which is pure and transcendental, could be chanted by a person with a material body. So Maharaj Parikshit wanted to understand from Sukadeva Goswami whether or not the Vedas actually describe the Absolute Truth as personal or impersonal. So we're reading uh, through the, this long chapter, it's a very long chapter, Prabhupada explains. Just a minute, I'll close the door. Yes. <laughs> All right, so the Vedic process is to promote the conditioned soul gradually from the mode of ignorance uh, to the mode of passion and from the mode of passion to the mode of goodness. So in the mode of goodness, there is enough, enough light for understanding things. For example, from the earth a tree grows and from the wood of the tree Fire is produced. So in the process of getting fire from the wood, we first of all find that, that we get smoke. And then after some smoke, then there will be some heat. And then there will be fire. In this life, we get the fire, the fire, and then the fire. So when there is fire, so when there is fire, we can use it for various purposes. It's useful. 
we can use fire as, as, as the, the goal of sacrifice. So, in the material stage of life, the quality of ignorance is very prominent. So to get rid of this ignorance is a gradual process of purification. We gradually come from the from the mode of ignorance is like a barbaric stage of life. We were like barbarians, uncivilized. And when we come to become a little more civilized, then we may be in the mode of passion. Right? But in the mode of ignorance, we're like a barbarian, we're uncivilized, and our senses have are satisfied in the most gross manners. And then in the mode of passion, we were a little more civilized. The senses are, we gratify the senses in a more refined manner. And when we get promoted to the mode of goodness, then we can understand that the senses and the mind are engaged in material activities. Only due to be, because they're covered by material consciousness. So this, this impure consciousness is gradually transformed to Krishna consciousness. So and then the path of liberation is, is open. So we can see that we can approach the absolute truth by the senses and the mind. Hmm. So the conclusion is the senses, the mind and the intelligence, if they're in the gross stage of contamination, they cannot understand the Absolute Truth. But when the senses and the mind and intelligence are purified, then we can understand the Absolute Truth. And the way in which we can purify the senses and the mind intelligence is by doing devotional service.
So in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says that the purpose of Vedic knowledge is to understand Krishna. Right, Krishna says, by all the Vedas, I am to be known. I am the author, I am the compiler of the Vedas. Krishna so Krishna is understood by devotional service and devotional service begins by surrender. Krishna Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that we have to think of him always. And we have to render loving service to Krishna always. And we have to worship Krishna and we have to bow down before Krishna. You know this verse? This is from Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, the, the last verse of the ninth chapter. Manmana bhavamad bhakto madhyaji mam namaskaru mam mi vaishasi yukpaivam atmanam matparayana Krishna says, engage your mind in thinking of me, become my devotee, offer obeisances and worship me. Krishna says, And in this way you will be sure to come to me. So by this process, those four things, then one can enter into the kingdom of God without any doubt. Now if a person is enlightened, if he's in the mode of goodness by devotional service, then he gets freed from the mode of passion and ignorance. So Sukadeva Goswami wants to answer the question of Maharaj Pariksit. So Sukadeva Goswami, he wants to answer the So he uses a word, Atmani. Atmani, which means, which indicates the stage of being qualified as a Brahman and which one is allowed to study the Vedas, like the Upanishads. Without being, without coming to the Brahminical platform, nobody is qualified to read the Vedas. And they, even if they read them, they won't understand them unless they are a Brahmin. They're, so they must come to the Brahminical stage. So the Upanishads, they're a part of the Vedas. They're one of the important sections of the Vedas. So they, the Upanishads describe the different transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord. So 
So the Supreme Lord, one of the names of the Supreme Lord is Nirguna, which means that he has no qualities. But this does not mean that he has no spiritual qualities. He may have no material qualities, but he does have spiritual qualities. Mm. So when when we call the Lord Nirguna, it's only because he has qualities that the conditioned living entities cannot that, that he has qualities that because the lord has qualities that's why living entities also have qualities the living entities reflect the qualities of the Supreme Lord. So the purpose of studying the Upanishads is to understand the qualities of the Absolute Truth. Yeah, we, we don't need to understand the material qualities of passion and ignorance, but we need to understand the transcendental qualities. So the, to understand the Vedas, we have to understand there is material and there is spiritual qualities. So there were great sages like the four sons of Brahma, they're called the four Kumaras. And they were they were great sages, they followed the principles of Vedic knowledge. So they came gradually, they came gradually from impersonal understanding to personal understanding. So we are also recommended we should follow these great personalities. Sukadeva Goswami is also one of the great personalities and he gave the answer to the question of Maharaj Pariksit. So we want to understand these answers carefully. So Sukadeva Goswami answered Maharaj Pariksit's question in the authorized manner. He answered the question by this quoting from the previous Acharyas. If we follow in the footsteps of the great devotees, then we will easily come to path of liberation. 
，我们若是跟从这些伟大人物的步伐，便能很容易的通往解脱之路。And from path of liberation, then we can go back home, back to Godhead. 那么踏上了这条解脱之路，最后我们就能够重返家园，回归守神。So this is the way to perfect the human form of life. 这便是让人体、人类生命形体趋于完美的方法。So Sukadeva Goswami is still speaking to Maharaj Parikshit, and he tells Maharaj Parikshit, he said, "I want to tell you a nice story." Sukadeva Goswami 继续向 Parikshit Maharaj 说道，有关这一点，我想向你讲述一个故事。And he said, "This story is important because it's in connection with Narayan, the personality of Godhead." This story is very important because it has to do with the personality of Narayan. So this story is a conversation between Narayan Rishi and the great sage Narada. This story is. Narana Rishi 与伟大的圣者 Narada 的的谈谈话。Narana Rishi is still living at Badarik Ashram, and he is an incarnation of Lord Narayan. Narana Rishi 仍然居住在嗯 Badarik Ashram。Badarik Badarik Ashram。Ba Badarik Ashram。而 Narayana Rishi 被认为是 Narayana 的一个化身。So Badarik Ashram is in the northernmost part of the Himalayan mountains. Badarik Ashram 位于喜马拉雅山的北部，最北部。And it's usually always covered with snow. 它通常呢，常年。被积雪所覆盖着。But pious religious people will go to visit this place during the summer, when the snow is not very much. 但是，虔诚的有宗教心的人们会在夏季，当积雪已经逐渐消融的时候，去拜访这个地方。So one time it happened that Narada. Who is a great devotee among the demigods was traveling among different planets, and he desired to meet Lord Narayan personally in Badarik Ashram. 有一回，半神中的伟大奉献者拿拿拉达漫游不同的星体，他决定亲自觐见位于。Badarak Ashram 的 Narayana. So he wanted to meet him to offer his respects. 他希望去会见他，向他顶拜。So this great sage, who is an incarnation of Godhead, who is called Narayana Rishi, he has been doing tapasya and austerities. From the very beginning of the creation, this great sage's great person, Narayana Rishi, from the creation has been doing this. And he's been doing this austerity to teach all the people of Bharat Varsha how to achieve the highest perfectional stage of life. How to go back to Godhead? He 之所以从事苦修，是为了教导巴拉图瓦尔什的居民们如何达到最高的完美境界，如何重返神手。So his austerities, Narayana Rishi's austerities and penances, are an example for all human beings. Narayana Rishi 的忏悔和苦修是人类的典范。So Narayana Rishi was sitting among the devotees 
in a village called Kalapagram. Naran Rishi had Zai Fusian Jada, Su Yusha, to those at Haman Chitung, had Zai Egatia, Kalapagram, the Sunsadi. So these sages who were sitting with Lord Narayana and with Narada Muni, no, no, they were with Lord Narayana. So they were sitting with him, and at that time, Narada also came there. So Narada Muni offered his respects to Narayana Rishi. Narada Bensiang Narayana Rishi Dingli. Then Narada asked him about, he asked him the same question which Maharaj Parikshit had asked Sukadeva Goswami. So the Rishi, Narayana Rishi answered by following in the footsteps of his predecessors. And he told a story of how the same question had been discussed on a planet up in the top of the universe called Jana Loka. So this Janaloka planet is above the heavenly planets and it's above the moon and Venus. So on this planet Janaloka the great sages and saintly persons live. So it happened in the past that the people who lived there, the great sages and saintly persons, one time they discussed, they were discussing about the situation, how to understand Brahman and his real identity. So the great sage Narayan began to speak to Narada Muni. He told Narada Muni, he said, I shall tell you a story which took place long time ago. There was a great meeting of all the residents of the heavenly planets and all the important brahmacharis all came. So this discussion, their discussion was on the same subject matter to understand the absolute truth, Brahman. They wanted to understand is it personal or impersonal? So Lord Narayan told Narada Muni, he said, You were not present at that meeting 
because you had gone to see my expansion Aniruddha, who lives on the island of Sweta Dweep. Narayana to do Narada Shoda, Nashir Nibim Zasha, Ime Nichian Wa, Chuza Shita Dweep, the Kojan, Aniruddha. So in that meeting, all the great sages and the brahmacharis, they discussed, they were discussing the point about which Narada Muni had asked. So their discussion was very interesting. It was such a delicate discussion that even the Vedas were unable to answer the intricate questions raised. So Narayana Rishi told Narada that the same question Narada had raised had been discussed in the meeting four months ago. Narayana Rishi told Narada that the four months ago we talked about Narada so it was so delicate, the discussion was so delicate that even the Vedas were not able to answer the question. So Narada, Narayana Rishi told Narada Muni that the same question Narada had asked had been discussed in that meeting on Jana Loka. Narayana Rishi told Narada that Narada had asked the question that Narada had asked in Jana Loka. So Janaloka, it means the planet above the heavenly planets. Janaloka And it's just down a bit from Brahmaloka. So this is how we understand everything. We have to understand everything with the help of the disciplic succession through the parampara. So we see here how the, the great sages got some difficulty in, in Narada Muni and his followers, you know, they could not get so many things from the market to help their program. Pardon? Krishna. So anyway, we have to understand these things through the disciplic succession. So Maharaj Pariksit, his, his question was referred to Sukadeva Goswami and Sukadeva Goswami brought the matter to Narada. This is the way to understand the 
परीक्षित महाराज询问了 शुकदेव गोस्वामी और शुकदेव गोस्वामी यो शांग नारदा चिंशिल And Narada Muni, he put the same questions to Narayana Rishi. And Narada Muni, you shall Narayana Rishi chashun. And Narayana Rishi put the, the the matter to higher authorities on the Janaloka planet, where only great sages live. Narayana Rishi, you shall. 在扎纳洛卡星体上的更高权威提出，而这些伟大圣者们就居住在扎纳洛卡上面。So there, the question could be discussed by the four Kumaras and other great scholars. 库马尔四兄弟和那些伟大的学者们曾经讨论了这个问题。嗯、mm -hmm.。So they, the, the four Kumaras had unlimited volumes of knowledge. These four Kumaras' knowledge was unlimited. And they had done a lot of austerities and penances, and they showed the highest character. They had done a lot of austerities and penances, and they showed the highest character. And they're very friendly, and they're gentle in behavior. They are gentle. Their behavior is mild. So, for them. There is no distinction between friends and enemies. For them, for them, there is no distinction between friends and enemies. They are very much neutral. They are not affected by ordinary people. They are completely neutral. They are not affected by ordinary people. They are very neutral. So, because the four Kumaras are transcendentally situated, they're above all material contamination. Because four Kumar are transcendentally situated, so they are above all material contamination. And they're always neutral. The four Kumaras are always neutral about material dualities. Kumar four brothers. 他们对于物质的二元性，他们是全然中立的。Now in the discussion among the four brothers, one of them, one of the four Kumars, namely Sanandan, was selected to speak. 在他们的讨论中，四库马尔中的 Sanandan, Sanandan 被推举发言。And the other four brothers, they were able to hear him. They were to sit and listen and hear him. 其他的兄弟则坐在那里仔细的聆听。Okay. So Sanand Sanandan said, after the dissolution of the whole universe. Then at that time, the entire energy and the whole creation enters into the body of Garbhodaksha Vishnu. Sananda said, "The universe will be dissolved. The whole energy and creation will enter into Garbhodaksha Vishnu." So the Lord, Gar Lord Garbhodakshayi Vishnu, he remains asleep for a long time. But when there's again need of creation, then at that time he wakes up. 那时，主他便酣睡
，当再有需要创造时，他便醒来。嗯。So the process to Uh, what happens when the Lord is resting? Then the Vedas personified. They gather around the Lord and they begin to glorify Him by speaking about His qualities and pastimes. 当 Garuda Shai Vishnu 酣睡的时候，韦达诸经的化身便云集在了他周围。赞颂他奇妙的超然逍遥。Just like a king may have many servants, so that when the king is asleep in the morning, some servants will be appointed who will come into his bedroom, and they will begin the day by singing about the wonderful qualities of the Lord. 这必像一国之君有很多仆人。当早上君主睡意正浓的时候，有一些仆人便会来到他的卧室，歌颂他的英勇功勋。嗯嗯嗯。And when the the king in this way, the king will gradually wake up, hearing about his wonderful activities. 一国之君就这样听着他自己的奇妙的事迹，逐渐的醒来。So there are, there are a number of living entities who recite the Vedas. They're called the personified Vedas. 有一些生物体，嗯，他们。他们吟诵《韦达经》，他们被称为是《韦达诸经》的化身。So they sing about the glories of the Lord. 他们便唱诵着主的荣耀。And they sing how the Lord is unconquerable, and no one is equal to Him or greater than Him. 他们歌颂说，主是不可战胜的，没有人。可以和他并驾齐驱。And nobody can be more glorious than him. 也没有人能够比主更加光荣。And then the personified Vedas say that by your own transcendental nature, you fully possess all the opulences. 给大家诸经的化身唱道。你自己的超然本质拥有全部的六种富裕。Right, wealth, beauty, fame, knowledge, strength, and renunciation. 包括财富、美丽、名声、知识、力量以及气绝。嗯。You are the only. You are the. You are able to deliver all the conditioned souls from Maya. You 能够把所有受条件限制的灵魂从玛雅假象的桎梏中解脱出来。And the personified Vedas pray to the Lord that we pray that you will kindly do this. 韦达诸经的化身就向主祈祷说：“我们热切的请求你这样做。” And all the living entities who are part, because they're all part and parcel of the Lord, they're naturally joyful, eternal, and full of knowledge. 一切生物因为是主的所属部分，本来是快乐、永恒和充满知识的。
but because of their own faults, they imitate you by trying to become the supreme enjoyer. 但是他们却犯了错误，试图模仿主，成为至尊的享乐者。So in this way, they disobey the order of the supreme lord, and they become offenders. 这样，他们便违抗了主的命令，成为了冒犯者。And because of their offenses, the material energy takes charge of them, makes them prisoners. 由于他们的冒犯，物质能量便管制了他们，把他们关在监狱里。哈利波，哈利克什纳。现在可以跟你洗脚吗？要不要？哎，我还上课。好，你好，对不起，对不起，几那几点？啊，我还需要二十分钟。嗯，呃、uh, ，so they become offenders, uh, and because of their offenses. They're put under the material energy. 由于他们的冒犯，他们便置被置于物质能量之下。And they're that way the 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 transcendental qualities, which are bliss and joy and wisdom, are covered. By material qualities, their happiness, happiness, and wisdom's transcendent qualities have been covered by material qualities. So the material manifestation is just like a prison house for the conditioned souls. 物质展示对于受条件限制的灵魂，就好比是监狱。So conditioned souls are struggling hard to get free from material bondage. 受条件限制的生物努力挣扎，欲逃离物质的束缚。So they're given different kinds of engagements, different kinds of services to do. 他们被赋予了不同的活动，不同的服务去做。But all of these different services are based on knowledge supplied by the, the Supreme Lord. 但一切活动都是以主所赐予的知识为本。So the conditioned souls can do pious activities only when the Lord mercifully inspires them to do so. 受条件限制的灵魂，只有在主的激励之下，才能够从事虔诚的活动。And without taking shelter of the lotus feet of the Lord, they cannot overcome the influence of the material energy. 尚未皈依主莲花族的人不能摆脱物质能力的影响。So the personified Vedas tell the Lord that we are always engaged in your service by helping the conditioned souls to understand you. 伟大经的化身说：“我们作为伟大知识的化身，经常服务你，帮助受条件限制的灵魂明白你。” So this prayer of the personified Vedas shows that the Vedas are meant for helping the conditioned souls to understand Krishna. 伟大经诸位化身的祷文显示，伟大经为的是要冒。帮助受条件限制的灵魂去了解 Krishna。嗯。All of the personified Vedas 
all of what we call the personified Vedas are called Shrutis. They all offered prayers to the Lord again and again. And they would say, Jai, Jai. <laughs> so this shows us that the Lord is the most glorious. Of all of his glories, the most important is his causeless mercy upon the conditioned souls. Brings them out from the clutches of Maya. All right, so we'll stop and ask if there's some questions. Hare Krishna Gurudev, please let the man go away from here. I'm sorry if I miss anything. I, I, I'm trying to get later. Gurudev, um, I want to ask, when you were talking about uh, 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 Jnana Lokavasis, the Rishis who stay there, were they, are they completely in the mode of goodness or are they also influenced by mode of fashion and ignorance? Because they are in the material world, right? So Who? Is Who are in the, the material The rishis and the, the sages that you, you mentioned, they, they live a little below Dhammaloka. Well, there are different places in the universe. Some places are in the mode of goodness. Depends. See, these sages, they came from the very upper planets in the universe, which is the mode of pure mode of goodness. Mm -hmm. So, they're not influenced by passion or ignorance. They're great sages. They're in control of their mind and senses. Mm. What is known because then I was wondering how can Lord Brahma is influenced by mode of fashion, but then the sages are only in the mode of goodness. Well, because Lord Brahma took on the work of creation. Mm -hmm. And so for the work of creation he has to associate with people who are in the mode of passion. Oh okay. But he's not really in the mode of passion, but he associates sometimes with people in the mode of passion. Mm -hmm. So sometimes he gets affected. Um, definitely nothing zero for the mode of ignorance, right? Yeah. Guru Mani? Yeah. Mm, 在善良属性当中就是不受激情和愚昧的影响 然后有Gita 是 it only personalists can be uh, uh, they can go to Jnana Loka or even impersonalists can go there? Jnana Loka? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yeah, personalists can also go there. Impersonalists also can? 
Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. So even if they believe that the Lord is not a person, but they can still go there. Well, yeah, they could do. Yeah. But if they, they, if they're offensive, of course, if they commit offenses against the Lord, then they may not be able to go there so easily. If they say they deny the form of the Lord, mm -hmm. they say the Lord is not a person, then that's offensive. But if they're mm -hmm. just simple, if they just don't know, then they can go there. If they're Brahmagyanis, and not Brahmagyanis, they just simply know the Brahman. They don't know anything about the Lord. They don't know. They don't deny. And they don't. They just don't know anything. So these people, kind of people, these people can go there. The Brahmagyanis, right? Yes, absolutely, brother. Understood. Understood, brother. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Yeah,比有记者说的有记者说,就是人格主义者,呃,可以去占了路口,非人格主义者可不可以去? Yuatisachi问说,我们现在还是新人,那么有一些呢,我们认为是比我们高的灵性上,有一些呢,我们认为在灵性上是低的,那不是限,就是限入了二元性当中,那如果避免这种二元性。Um, well, we have to see not in terms of high level or low level but we have to see their spiritual nature that everyone is a spirit soul everyone is part and parcel of krishna and we're on a spiritual journey so we may be new devotees but we don't remain new devotees as time goes on we'll become you know senior devotees in the beginning, we're new devotees, but as time goes on, you become a senior devotee. So we have to understand the spiritual nature of everything. The, the, the truth is our spiritual nature. It, if we're thinking materially, we're thinking new devotee, old devotee, that is our own conditioning. Ultimately, everyone is devotee. And the devotees are all spiritual. We don't have to look at the high We look at their spiritual nature. They are all spirits. They are Krishna's part. They are in their spiritual nature. We are the devotees, but we cannot always be the devotees. We are the new devotees, but we cannot always be the new devotees. We also 成为资深的奉献者，也许开始是新奉献者，那我们应该看到奉献者的灵性本质，这才是真理。嗯，就是以高低来评判呢，这是物质的想法，是我们受条件限制的想法。
，终极来世呢，奉献者他们都是灵魂。嗯、啊、，Yeah。OK， 我要。就是我，我们看到，嗯，我们也能意识到，就是在奉献当中，木牛姑娘她们地位最崇高，而乌达瓦她是最纯粹的奉献者。Well, spiritual world, everyone will be in their spiritual positions eternally. It's not that. Yes, you could. In, in the spiritual world, of course, there are some people who are very close to Krishna, the very intimate friends of Krishna, and some and others are, you know, not directly connected to Krishna, but servants of the servant, some distance away from Krishna. So yeah, we have to expect that in the spiritual world, it's it's there here. It's here in this world. And similarly, in the spiritual world, it will be like that. Krishna has very, very intimate friends who are very close to him, and there's other devotees who are also pure devotees who are not serving Krishna directly, but they're serving Krishna. As, as maybe they're serving the friends or the friends of Krishna, friends of the friend of Krishna. 每个人都永恒的处在他们的灵性地位上，有一些和 Krishna 的关系非常亲密，嗯，还有些呢不是直接的在服务他，而是他的仆人的仆人，所以我们也也是可以期待着有这种呃关系的，也也我们也可以期待这一点，就是 Krishna 有他的亲近的朋友，还有的是他的呃朋友的朋友朋友的仆人。You have to understand that in the spiritual world, there's no sense of envy or competition. Everyone is happy, engaged in the service of the Lord. You you 要明白，在灵性世界呢，不存在嫉妒和竞争。每个人在服务主的时候都很快乐。There's transcendental competition to try to do more service for the pleasure of Krishna. 有为了 Krishna 的快乐，嗯，也有超然的竞争。Just like devotees had transcendental competition to distribute Prabhupada's books, Prabhupada said, "Yes, it's transcendental competition. It's not envy." But it's for the pleasure of Krishna. So, in the same way, different devotees are serving for the pleasure of Krishna. 就好像在派书上面呢，也存在着超然的竞争。嗯，这个不是嫉妒，而是为了主的快乐，嗯、呃，存在的。嗯，所以奉奉献者们，他们为了为了主的缘故呢，他们也有着。不同不同的方面，不同的服务。OK。Hare Krishna。Hare Krishna， 为瓦尼，马来西亚首。Hare Krishna， Guru Maharaj， please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Prabhupada. Uh, Guru Maharaj, here it is. Here they are telling Maharaj Parikshit question Sukadeva Goswami. Sugadev Goswami referred this to Narada, and Narada referred to Narayana Narayan Rishi, Narayan Rishi, and then after that it's discussed in Jana Loga. So I was confused. Who has the question first? Uh, is it discussed? This uh, is it asked by Parikshit Maharaj first, and later discussed in Jana Loga, or the story tells uh, about a past event that is discussed in Jana Loga? 
Let's discuss first in Jana Loka. Uh. Same question was asked in Jana Loka long before. And then it came down. Yeah, yes, 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 Guru Maharaj. Okay. Parikshimara Yes, Guru Maharaj, I, I get it. Okay. Guru Maharaj, yeah, I, uh, I want to just ask about the question of Parishikt Maharaj. Uh, he is asking, uh, he is telling that this Vedas is a material sound that is discussing with the different modes. Then how it can explain about the absolute truth? It's, it's like that, right, Guru Maharaj? Yes. He wants to understand how he wants to also understand if if the absolute truth is personal or impersonal also and okay he, he wants to understand how the holy name is a pure spiritual sound how it could be understood by material mind and senses how could we how could the material tongue be used to chant when we make material sounds, how could we ever produce the spiritual sound of the holy name? The holy name is spiritual. So he wants to understand that. Oh, oh yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. But we, um, by reading the Vedas, uh, they, we cannot understand the absolute truth, right? Like, uh, that's why... Uh, Veda Vyas, he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam. Right, Guru Maharaj? Yes. Reading the Vedas. Yeah. The Vedas, well, we the cannot Vedas, understand. The Vedas deal with the three modes of material nature. The Vedas is discussing more yeah. than material modes. So we, we're encouraged to rise above the modes of nature. Yeah, so in one way we cannot understand the absolute truth uh, exactly from the Vedas, right? Well, Brahman, since for the Brahmanas, you want to understand from the Vedas, you have to be Brahman. You have to be Brahmanically qualified to understand the Vedas. Mm -hmm. That was the point. Usually the, Bra the Vedas are only recited by the Brahmanas. If somebody wanted to do a very sacrifice, they have to get a Brahmana to do it. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, right. But usually, Krishna consciousness is for uh, Krishna consciousness is for everyone, right? Whether they are in mode of goodness or ignorance or passion, anyone can take up Krishna consciousness. They don't have to be in the mode of goodness for Krishna consciousness. Well, they have to come to the mode of goodness to do devotional service. Devotional service begins on the transcendental platform. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Bhagavad Gita says, Brahma Bhuta Prasanatma said, first you have to understand you're not the body, that you're Brahman. And then you have to see everyone equally and you don't anchor or lament for anything. Then you take up devotional service. So you have to come to that transcendental position to do, to actually engage in devotional service. You have to come to the liberated platform. Devotional service begins on the liberated platform. If you're in the mode of passion and ignorance, it's not going to be pure devotional, devotional service. Yeah, yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So we have to come out of these modes of nature. They have to come up to the mode of goodness and then transcend the mode of goodness. Yeah. 
You go around money. Yes. 就是他问了两个问题，一个是，嗯、呃，就就是他问了那个拿着目的，他到底提出的是什么问题？那那嗯，妈、呃、说他问的是圣明，他是纯粹灵性的声音。那么我们物质的心意和感官，嗯、呃，以及我们物质的舌头又如何能唱诵，呃，能够发出这种灵性的声音呢？啊、呃，然后他第二个问题是说，就是。嗯，每个人都呃应该去从事 Krishna 之学。那那那个善良、激情、愚昧属性的人，他们都可以从事，都可以成为 Krishna 之学吗？<咳>不是说，呃，马二说，就是他们必须得从愚、激情和愚昧上升到善良心态，因为奉献服务是始于超然的层面的。在佛家梵歌当中就是说了 ，Brahma Bhuta p a s a n a t m a 我们首先要明白，我们不是躯体，而是饭，是灵魂。然后我们达到平等的视欲，不悲，嗯，不欣喜，不悲哀，达到这种超然的地位，才可以从事纯粹的奉献服务。因为奉献服务是属于解脱的层面上，激情和愚昧属性下不是纯粹的奉献服务，必须要离开这个激情和愚昧，达到善，嗯、呃，来到善男的层面。以前的只有只有婆罗门才有资格认识伟达经，他们要做祭祀呢，只有去请婆罗门来做。Understand Vaishnavi? No. No. Ah yes, Guru Maharaj. I am. I am understanding. I am understanding now. I understood that we have.、Uh, so until we come to the liberated platform,、uh, we are not really doing devotional service. Yes, right. Yeah. We now we are. Yeah, we are trying. Right, right. Yes. Then, I understand. Is. 我们必须得达到解脱的层面了，那时候才能开始做奉献服。马二说：“是的，我们在努力，我们在做尝试，努力。” Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Okay. 看见维达维达巴提有个问题，嗯，他说，嗯、呃。Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Do my guru day, 感官、心意和智性通过奉爱服务净化。请问智性在奉爱服务中有哪些能得到净化 ？So, our senses, mind, and intelligence can be purified by devotional service. May I ask? As far as intelligence is concerned, which can be purified through devotional service? Yes, mind, senses, and intelligence can all be purified through devotional service. 感官、心意和智性都可以透过奉爱服务被净化。The next one, hmm, hmm. Lila Rani Sita said, "Nimbai Guru Krishna has sixteen main inner energy. This sixteen energy is one thousand times expanded, that is, one thousand six hundred milk cow. This sixteen energy between the milk cow and the milk cow has any relation? Any relation? Krishna has sixteen principal internal energy." This sixteen、uh, energy multiplied, uh, multiplied one thousand. That is one sixteen thousand gopis. What what's their relationship? What's the relationship between the sixteen energy and the gopis? Oh, 
well 16 energies I don't know where she's getting all this from. I don't know. Why does the gopis are eternal, eternal servants of Lord Krishna? And they're all engaged in the service of Krishna. They're enjoying Madhurya Ras with Krishna. So the gopis are all expansions of Srimati Radharani, the Ladini Shakti the pleasure potency of Lord Krishna. Uh,不知道您这个是从哪里干到的。这些牧牛姑娘,他们都是永恒的仆人,在服务着Krishna,他们在享受着Madhura Maybe it's related to the 16,000 wives which Lord Krishna took. Anyway, I'm sorry, I don't know where she's referring to this from. So you can bow to you. Do you know this is from where? Where does it say 16,000, 16 principal energies? Where is that? Okay. Lila Rani Sita, Tiger Shaw, Timaku, Zabun Davin, you even Liu Chen, Iba Limbabe, Munu Punya. 这十六种主要能量的一千倍扩展是一万六千位牧牛姑娘，另外一百零八位牧牛姑娘是什么来历？什么来历？So in Vandavan there are sixteen thousand one hundred eight gopis. These sixteen principal energy multiply uh one thousand. Uh, that is 16,000 gopis. So what about the other 108 gopi? What's their history? I don't know. I know there are eight principal wives. You can read about the eight principal wives. That's described in the 10th canto Srimad Bhagavatam. The eight principal wives, beginning with Rukmini, and then Satyabhama, and then Jambavati, and then you have also uh, Kalindi, and you have also Lakshmana, and you have uh, uh, there's also Bhattacharya. Um, Badra's one, yes, and then there's the one, um, the two more, I'm forgetting. Anyway, there's eight principal wives, you can read that, as described in detail in the 10th canto in the Krishna book also. But where the 100 comes from, I don't know. Anyway, they were all wives, they were all princesses taken capture by Bomasura and kept in the prison house of Bomasura. And Lord Krishna freed them all, and nobody would accept them for their wives. So Lord Krishna accepted all of them as his wives. Krishna被接受了他们为妻子。
Okay, and there any other yeah. question? 还有一个是 Jolene called Nitai Priya Devdasi. Yeah. Hare Krishna, yeah. Guru Mara, please accept my humble obeisances. Can you describe what is the characteristic of a person who has reached the liberated stage? Is it liberated from the control of material energy? Yeah. Okay, translate. Well, there are different ways in which we can understand the meaning of liberation. Certainly, one way is to think of liberation as being free from the three modes of material nature. Another meaning to liberation is that now you're qualified for devotional service. And on the highest platform, liberation means to understand your transcendental relationship with Lord Krishna in the spiritual world. Okay. So that's all the question for tonight. Okay, thank you, Guru Mani. Very kind of you for translation. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Thank all the devotees for the questions and participation. Thank Padma Mukhi Maharaji hosting. Mama Jufu Nabinda Function Sir, Jufu Niman One An, Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Record.